When I'm doing a low carb ketogenic diet, a lot of times I'll find myself with really stiff muscles. Like I feel like I'm just not moving as fluid as I normally do and it starts to frustrate me because I feel like my performance suffers as a result. Then I remind myself of all the research that I've read over the years that clearly outlines the importance of proper electrolytes when you are doing a ketogenic diet. So we're going to discuss that because there's one particular study that was published in the journal Nutrition and Metabolism that just illuminated it so clearly. It flat out showed that when we are losing electrolytes, mainly sodium, on a ketogenic diet, which happens very easily because our kidneys expel the excess sodium on a ketogenic diet due to low insulin levels, we have a loss in performance. And most of the loss of performance and most of the weakness and even the lightheadedness and the fatigue that comes as a result of a lower carb diet is because you are not compensating for sodium. You're not compensating the loss of sodium because what ends up happening is as the kidneys expel sodium, they also expel potassium because it has to keep in balance. So then you don't have the electrical charge. Here's what happens when you're working out. Here's why your muscles might feel stiff. So for me, like just anecdotally, I go into the gym and I will just feel like it takes me a lot more to warm up. I feel like my muscles just aren't sending the right signal. They're not contracting right or they're remaining contracted and my signals are disrupted. Okay, let me just illuminate how this works. Okay, sodium and potassium send an electrical charge. Okay, sodium is electrically charged and it is the power, right? It is the energy, it is the electricity. And then the potassium sort of pulls the sodium back to launch it into the next nerve cell. Without potassium, sodium can't really move. Without sodium, we don't really have electricity. So our body is going to prioritize, if we're low in sodium, it's gonna prioritize where we use it and performing at a high physical level is not exactly prioritized when our body has a brain to run and organs to run, okay? Because all that still requires electrical signaling. We would be in big trouble if we did not have electrolytes flowing through us all the time. But then what happens at a muscular level is even more intriguing because it has to do with calcium too. So if you are into working out, then this is gonna be intriguing to you. Here's what happens. The sodium potassium send this whole you know, action potential, it goes down our nerves, and then eventually it hits a muscle fiber. And when it hits that muscle fiber, it triggers, it hits what's called the synapse. And that synapse opens, then what opens is called a calcium channel. These calcium channels open and then calcium flows into a cell in the muscle. Well, when the calcium flows into the cell in the muscle, it triggers the release of a bunch of different neurotransmitters. Isn't that weird? Like just movement itself, triggering movement, triggers the release of neurotransmitters. But one of the neurotransmitters is going to be acetylcholine. If you work out, then you know what acetylcholine is. Acetylcholine is what triggers the actual muscle to move, okay? So calcium triggers acetylcholine, then the acetylcholine binds to the muscle fiber and it signals a whole different sodium potassium movement down the muscle fiber membrane. So basically sodium potassium ultimately will react with the calcium, the calcium will trigger another sodium potassium reaction and that will move our muscle. Well, if we do not have our electrolytes in place, what ends up happening? Our muscles remain sort of locked up. Okay, we have too much calcium and not enough magnesium to relax it and we have not enough sodium potassium to properly fire a muscle. So what ends up happening is some of our muscles can be locked up and some of our muscles aren't even firing properly, which can mess up our movement patterns. Okay, if you're looking for an electrolyte, the one that I would recommend is one called Element, L-M-N-T. So Rob Wolf, who is a pretty darn good friend of mine, is one of the creators of this product, and he is a biochemistry just guru, much more so than I am. Uh, highly, highly recommend this product. Yes, they are a supporter of this channel, so yes, they have sponsored this video, but I highly recommend it, because check this out. They've got these little, stick packs and like this is lemon habanero and this one's mango chili they have some really really good flavors and anyway there's if you are watching this video there's a link down below and you can get a sample pack of them you can try them out only paying shipping so you can get eight packets and not pay anything other than shipping so and that's only for people that are watching this video and watching my channel so you can also go to drink lmnt.com slash thomas that's drink lmnt.com slash thomas highly highly recommend it because their flavor profile is awesome and it focuses on sodium 
potassium, and then just the right amount of magnesium. So perfect for a low carb ketogenic diet. Highly recommend you check them out. So continuing on after that plug, here's what's going on. Okay, calcium has triggered the contraction, right? But it's triggering the contraction in sort of an interesting way. So once the sodium and potassium are continuing to send a signal down the muscle fiber, they activate a previously stored bucket of calcium. And this previously stored bucket of calcium then releases calcium. And what that does is it changes the shape of what is called the actin and myosin within our muscle cells. That, that literally right there is what makes a muscle contract. And I know that, that is a complicated way to explain it. But again, paraphrasing, brain signal, electrical signal hits the muscle, releases calcium, sends out a second signal to contract the muscle. Okay, if we have so much calcium, it's continuing to send that signal. So you might be saying, well, we don't need electrolytes, we just need less calcium. Well, calcium is counteracted by magnesium. So if we are deficient in magnesium, which a lot of us are, we run into a problem where we're overpowered by calcium and it's sending this constant excitatory response, which contracts our muscles. So if you're walking around kind of tight on the ketogenic diet, that is a very possible reason. I know it is for me. I personally take a lot of magnesium, but an important thing is also making sure all of my electrolytes are in balance. So when it comes to physical performance, you notice that, wait a minute, it might not be the lack of carbohydrates that is affecting me because when you are doing a ketogenic diet, you actually store a good amount of glycogen. So I hear people say, oh, well, my performance bonks on a ketogenic diet because I do a lot of heavy lifting. Oh, well, you clearly haven't given it enough time because I follow a strict ketogenic diet a lot of the time. I cycle in and out at periods, but when I'm strict keto, my performance doesn't change. I might feel a little bit of stiffness and I might feel some changes in other areas, but by and large, my strength doesn't really change, okay? And the thing is, is your muscle glycogen, the storage form of carbohydrates that provides you with the anaerobic energy that you 100% do need when you're training at a high intensity, you're still storing glycogen. Your body gets efficient at storing it through gluconeogenesis and through the sparing of carbohydrate utilization. Like it becomes efficient so that you still do have glycogen. So it's not like you're walking around with drained glycogen stores. Your body still has those carbohydrates to use. So usually the fatigue or the weakness is a result of electrolyte imbalances. So if you get up in the morning and you train in a fasted state, having electrolytes before your workout could be very, very effective if you feel like you are not getting the performance that you need. Okay, so when you're doing like your apple cider vinegar drink or anything like that in the morning or your coffee, add some salt to your coffee or add an element electrolyte pack, whatever you want to do to get that extra boost, at least test it out. Okay, so as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. Don't forget to try the element stick packs down below. That way you can get a free trial of them with just shipping and I will see you tomorrow.